<sighs> Welcome to Bandis, the show where I take a look at a piece of art and make an argument as to why somebody might think it'd be a good idea to either outright ban it, oh, or at least make some good choice cuts. Now today, I have an anthology film, a bit of a more obscure one, but one that I absolutely love. So what am I going to say so offensive about this film? Well, these are all inspired, you know, heavily by, you know, fairy tales of old, just with a modern, updated twist. And I just ran across something about, like, uh, Cambodia, I believe, banning a bunch of fairy tales, like Little Red Riding Hood, which is also adapted in here, you know, and, you know... Snow White, things like that, you know. Stories that perpetuate the gender stereotypes, which are unnecessary in this woke culture that we currently reside in. So, yeah. This film is sexist. And this definitely does indulge in things, you know, such as the problematic trope of the male gaze. Look at my beautiful titties, you perverted misogynistic man. Things like that, you know? It's like stories. They're told to a kid by his, you know, uncle that's supposed to be babysitting him. Like he's rather watch, you know, a Miss Need campaign instead of watching the kid. Puts him to sleep. He always gets in rooms like, ah, tell me a story. So he tells him a story. And, you know, he puts his own spin on it. So they're more violent or, well, not necessarily more violent because, you know, Grimm's fairy tales, you know. Even the ones that they collected, they toned down. So... That's better. So yeah, sleazy uncle telling stories. There's there's some sexuality in here. And then on top of being based on fairy tales, which are already problematic, you got doubly problematic. So yeah, I think... I think I said enough about the argument. What do I think of this film? I absolutely love this. And my favorite thing is the way it's structured. There's three stories in here. The first story the uncle tells, it's pretty much a straight up, you know, fairy tale. It takes place around the time that we associate with those stories. It has all the tropes. It's dark, serious. It does have sexuality. There's nudity and whatnot, you know. But it's a straight up fairy tale. And then each one, as he gets more and more annoyed, he just starts get caring less and less. So, the second one, which is, you know, Little Red Riding Hood. Instead of it being in the past, it takes place in modern times, you know, mid-80s. It has just enough elements going on to like, okay, yeah, this is Little Red Riding Hood. And then the third one, he just totally lets go. No, how to even trying to be fairy tales, just goes into straight up black comedy. That hardly resembles the source material of Goldilocks and the Three Bears. There's just enough elements there. It's like, okay, like the family, which is, you know, three people that escape from an institution for the criminally insane. They break loose. They're called the Bear Family or something like that. And that is the 
closest. And then there's this other insane chick. She finds this house that happens to be their house they were living in before they got, you know, picked up. The similarities end there. And it's fun. It's It goes from kind of being straight horror to just straight up black comedy. And I love the way it's done. Of just, as he keeps telling the story, he just cares less and less. Just does whatever he wants. So yeah, fun little film. If you like anthology movies, you may like this, but it might not be your taste. I mean, it's not considered to be, you know, like one of the true classics, you know, like Creep Show or Tales from the Crypt. But if you like anthology films, I would say give this a shot. That's about it for this one. Check me out on Minds and Bit Shoot. I will see you later. Take care.